In this episode of the Internet of Things show, we're going to talk about the Azure IoT Hub device provisioning service. And for this, we have Nicole with us today. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Olivier. So tell me a bit about yourself, Nicole. What are you doing within Microsoft? Yeah, so I'm a program manager on the IoT platform team here in Azure. And I'm the sole PM on the device provisioning service. Cool. So let's talk about this device provisioning yeah. service. First of all, like, before going into what it is, why are we doing that? Yeah, so uh, device provisioning is actually a really important part of a device's life cycle. So oftentimes when we talk about IoT solutions, we like talking about our millions of devices simultaneously connected to a single IoT hub, sending up all their telemetry data, that data getting read by mm -hmm. Azure ML and getting processed and producing insights, and that's great. But all those millions of devices have to get connected up to IoT Hub yep. in the first place. And we call that process device provisioning, or provisioning the device to the right IoT solution for it to exist in for potentially the rest of its useful life. Right. So isn't there any solution existing today that would do that? How is it done today? Yeah, so prior to using our device provisioning service, what we found customers had to do was actually build their own which meant that if they didn't have a, any expertise with building their own cloud mm -hmm. solutions, they would then have to quickly gain that experience using a cloud solution or potentially using an on-premise solution to build their own. And that's only if they wanted to automate it. Uh, a lot of customers didn't actually have that capability, and so what they would have to do is hard code individual connection strings on every single device that they produce. This oh, doesn't see. really scale very well, as you might imagine. Well, it doesn't, and then you can think about if a device is compromised, like, how do you actually get a new set of credentials on that device, right? Yeah. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. So what is it that we're doing for that? What is device provisioning service? Yeah, so you can think of the device provisioning service kind of like uh, a hotel concierge, but for the cloud. So, you know, when you go to check into a hotel, what you do is you, you go up and you say, hello, mm -hmm. you know, I would say, my name is Nicole, I provide them with my driver's license. Kay. They would look me up in their database and say, oh, you know, thank you, Miss Birdie, you are like the elevators around the hall to your right, and you're in room 214. Uh, and then I would go in and my room would mm -hmm. be set up for me, and sometimes the bellhop would take all my bags up, and everything's taken care of and it's a pretty friction-free process. Oh my so okay. DPS acts as the concierge where a device wakes up and it says, hello, provisioning service, I don't know who I am, but I do have this identity, can, can you tell me where I should go? So what would be that, that identity? Could yeah. it be a MAC address? Could it be, wh yeah. what is it so um, there are two different forms uh, of identity that we support in the device provisioning service. Uh, first and foremost is X509 certificates. Mm -hmm. And there are two different ways you can use that, which we can get into in a bit if you want. Uh, and the second way is using a trusted platform module, or TPM's endorsement key public, okay. to, to verify that the device is, in fact, who it says it is. Got it. So the device comes in and says, hey, I'm, my name is that, right? Yep. I've been given that name. So what's next? Yeah, so the provisioning service will validate that that identity is, in fact, owned by that device. For X509, it's your standard X509 TLS auth flow. Okay. And it will say, all right, well, you know, thank you, device. You, you've successfully told me that your device toaster123. Mm -hmm. And based on my information about you, you belong to the IoT hub of you know, to Toasters Incorporated. And let me you know, create a device identity there for you. Got it. Set that up with the initial configuration that we want all toasters to have. Mm -hmm. And then return that connection information to that device. So now this device can connect to IoT Hub and start sending its information, in this case, the toast information. OK, I get it. So, and what happens, actually, we are talking about that a minute ago, uh, in terms of um, if a device gets compromised, right? So that identity that you got is no longer valid, because eventually you want, you want to ensure that the device is still we say it is. So yeah. how does it work? Yeah, so you can easily uh, revoke access to a device mm -hmm. by forcing that device to go through a reprovisioning flow which basically requires that device to go back to the provisioning service and say, we don't know if we can trust you. We want you to re-verify -ver that you are who we say you are. And what you can do in the provisioning service mm -hmm. and is specify either different devices, or if you're using X509 signing certificates, you can specify an entire signing cert. If you mm -hmm. have a, a signing certificate that gets compromised somewhere in your manufacturing process, and say, any device with this is not allowed to provision. And so mm. what you do is you access, you essentially cut off that you device from the cloud yeah, without having to touch the device. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. And so you have some some configuration to do, right, on the on the device provisioning service side of things, because mm -hmm. things don't happen just magically up there, right? Right. So I think we're going to see some of that. Do so you want to show us some? Sure. So let me show you 
what this looks like is in my setup. And so I have here just a, a simple setup of mm -hmm. a demo that I like to show. And I'll just walk you through how I went around and set this up. So here you are on the Azure portal, right? So yeah. Did so you have to create an IT hub before, or is it just directly there? Yeah, I do have to create an IoT hub. So if I go back to my dashboard, you can see I have both a device provisioning service set up, mm -hmm. as well as a, an IoT hub that Got I it. can then link to, to DPS. So when I go into my provisioning service, first what we have to do is link IoT hubs to the service. Okay. And what this is doing is basically telling the provisioning service these are the IoT hubs that you're allowed to assign devices to. Got it. Is there a link between regions where things are deployed? Nope. You can link an IoT hub in any region and across subscriptions as well. So you don't okay. have to, to limit yourself to just IoT hubs in the same region as your DPS. OK, cool. Yeah, so. Carry on. Yeah, <laughs> here you can see I've already linked a, an IoT hub okay. for the demo. And then if I go to add, I can then select subscriptions that I personally have access to mm -hmm. as a, an administrator. And then once I select one of those, I can then select an IoT hub from there to add. Got it. OK. So and because we are in the IoT yeah. team, we're going to have a sea of them. Because exactly. So <laughs> I, I won't go through and actually add one, so you okay. don't have to watch me scroll nope, and, and no pick. No problem. So once I've got one linked, then I have to configure my service to tell it how exactly I want it to allocate devices across my different IoT hubs. Okay. So now I'll go into my manage allocation policy setting. And this is where I tell the service how I want to automatically allocate devices to different IoT hubs. Uh -huh. So I have it set right now on the default of just an evenly weighted distribution. So if I have two different IoT hubs that are linked, um, I we just but we do a hashing of the of the registration ID that those mm -hmm. devices have, and mm -hmm. eventually over time you'll get about a 50-50 split across those Got two it. hubs. That makes sense. You can also do a lowest latency allocation uh -huh. that uses information about the ping time between the device and the IoT hub to determine which IoT hub is closest to that device, and then thus do kind of geo-sharding of your devices. Got it. Yeah, because like cloud is magic, but still, yeah. it's a set of data center somewhere it, in the world, right? Exactly. So the closest device is to a data center, the lowest the latency will be. Right? Yeah, okay, and that's it. very important in a lot of <coughs> IoT applications. OK. And the last one is the static configuration via an enrollment list. And this one, to explain that, I'm going to show you then what the enrollment list is mm -hmm. uh, and go into a little bit of detail what all information is contained okay. there. So within my enrollment list, so you can consider the enrollment list of that list of reservations that your hotel concierge has. Mm -hmm. So in this case, any device or group of devices in the enrollment list is one that has been explicitly allowed to provision via the provisioning Got service. Okay. Um, similarly, you can also uh, you can also revoke access to a device by explicitly disabling an enrollment and saying this right. device is no go. Yeah. And you can do that on groups of devices as well? You can. Okay. So there are two different concepts for mm -hmm. an enrollment list. So there's an enrollment group, which uses a, an X509 signing certificate to define a group. Okay. So going into a little bit of detail about how X509 mm -hmm. certs work, you can create an intermediate signing certificate that's mm -hmm. used to produce LEAF certificates for all of your devices okay. that you use to identify those devices. Mm -hmm. And instead of having to say, each of these devices I want to have individually put in here, yeah. if all these devices have the same configuration required, I just want to say anything that's been signed by this signing certificate is allowed to go in, and it'll it. all have the same configuration. Got it. So basically, in factory, you flash all of these devices with exactly the same code and certs, right? Unique certs per device, Unique certs but per device. it's exactly the same code. Yeah, got it. Yeah. So then we have individual enrollments as well. And for these, you can use either individual LEAF certificates mm -hmm. or uh, use a, a trusted platform module or TPM endorsement key to provide identity for those devices. Got it. Now, individual enrollments are very useful if you have devices that need to have unique configuration per device mm -hmm. because it gives you that fine grain control over what your device has to do. Awesome. So if I go into my first demo device registration to show you a bit of what's what is possible in here. So here you can see that this particular device hasn't actually gone through and registered yet. But I'm using an X509 certificate on this device. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I just have using the thumbprint. I don't have a, a signing certificate that I uploaded. I've told it to assign an IoT hub automatically. But okay. what I could choose to do 
is explicitly tell it that this particular device I want to assign to a particular IoT hub. Okay. And this is really important for use in multi-tenancy scenarios where I, have, I sell maybe batches of devices mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. a certain customer and a batch of devices to a different customer and I want those devices to go to IoT hubs that might be owned by their respective Got customers. It. So you can isolate basically the stream of data to one another of the exactly. IoT hubs. Got it. And, and as you were saying, also geolocalize them as well, right? Yep, okay. exactly. I can also optionally specify the IoT Hub device ID that I want this device to have if, okay. like many devices, they, they use uh, GUIDs or something that's mm -hmm. not really human readable, just in the factory. But I might want to specify a human readable name for this device mm, okay. when it gets to my IoT Hub. And then the most interesting part of the enrollment list is this initial device twin state. And this is where we define what's the initial desired configuration mm. that we want this device to have in the field. So they come online and eventually you have a specific configuration linked to that specific IoT hub that you, you determine was the target for these devices. Got it. Yeah, okay. exactly. This is a bit manual, all of that, right? Can you, so like I, we we're seeing like groups enrollments and, and individual enrollments. Obviously, you will not be doing individual enrollments like at scale, right? Because right. we're talking millions of devices. But do you have a way to automate that beyond the portal? We do. We offer uh, APIs that allow you to do batch updates to the enrollment list. So you don't have to always click through this, this UI in order to actually make those updates. You can go through and call our APIs directly and automatically update that. And we have a seri uh, selection of service SDKs that you can use of pr practically the language of your choice to actually okay. go through and do that. Awesome. We'll talk more about the um, devices part of things in a, in a, uh, pre in a like next episode. But uh, yeah, thanks for that introduction. It was pretty cool. And uh, I can imagine now uh, we have this uh, DPS service that um, it's going to make clients and customers' life m way easier when it comes to connecting their devices. Well, thanks a lot, Nicole. Yep, thank you, and, Olivia. Uh, we'll come back soon for more on uh, the device provisioning service for Azure IoT Hub.